Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing the module of thermal design. We had seen how power losses may be estimated for power electronic converters. Now this lecture we will see the basic thermal modeling that can be used for choice of heat sinks. Now before going into the thermal modeling let us uh, look into the different types of uh, heat sinks that are used for power electronic converters. Now here you can see that uh, this is an aluminum uh, heat sink where uh, you have got several fins in it. These are what are called as the fins. So these all of these, these are known as fins and then uh, what matters in heat sinks uh, how they become different from each other is the thickness of this plate. So this is this plate which you can see and on that these fins are attached. So this thickness is very important. And then also the thickness of these fins and of course the distance between any two of uh, these fins. That means uh, total how many number of fins are uh, there in this heat sink and that is of course dependent on the width of the heat sink as well. So, this width is important as well as the length of the heat sink. Further, what is the height of these uh, fins? This height that also plays important role and uh, what all these uh, of these things that means your length, your width, the thickness, the density of the fins and the thickness of the fins, the height of the fins, these all finally constitute the geometry of the heat sink. And plus the type of the material that is chosen for the heat sink, these decide the thermal resistance of the heat sink. Now this we will be discussing more further. So, R theta or what is called as the thermal resistance that gets decided by all these things the geometry and the, the material. Now, um, what we see here is that this is another heat sink and you can see of course the geometry in the form of shape it is similar. But uh, this, this number of the fins, the thickness of fins, the dimensions are different. So, this uh, heat sink performance will be different than this one that is shown here. This is another one uh, which is shown here and this is a power module which is mounted on the heat sink. So, what is uh, usually done is that, that uh, the module or whatever power semiconductor device we have that uh, is mounted on the heat sink uh, by using screws. And uh, in between the surface uh, uh, a pad or a thermal pad or, or thermal grease is applied to connect it to attach it with the now uh, with this heat sink. And uh, then uh, this is a module there may be uh, heat sinks uh, there may be uh, I mean we may be using power electronic in any power electronic converter only one device like this MOSFET that is uh, placed on this uh, heat sink this is a much uh, smaller heat sink. You can see that this uh, geometry of this heat sink is very different from these two that are shown here. Now for the single discrete devices there are other types of heat sinks also you can see here. Now these are the fins that you can see now you uh, see the uh, shape of the fins over here and uh, here and uh, for this heat sink so they all are very different. So there are various geometries of heat sinks that are available and uh, you can choose 
from among them what suits your purpose. Then uh, this is another heat sink which is shown here. Now uh, this is called as the pin fin type and here you can see that these fins are uh, not of this type that is shown here. These fins are here like that of some pins. So there are small, small, very small, small pins uh, that are attached uh, to that metallic plate which is on the bottom on the base. So in short we can say that the many different types of heat sinks I have just shown a few of them here. There are various other geometries of heat sinks which are possible and uh, many times uh, what people do is that they do not um, additionally attach another heat sink instead uh, they also use the enclosure of the converter as a heat sink. So in the enclosure itself fins are put and arrangement is made such that that uh, it acts like a heat sink and that is also used for cooling. Now there are different types of cooling one can be natural cooling. Natural cooling means uh, that uh, just the heat sink is put and uh, uh, naturally it will cool down. No further additionally uh, anything is done for the cooling. So that is called as the natural cooling. Second is your forced air cooling. Now here your forced air cooling picture is shown here. Now you can see here that uh, 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 this one uh, is the heat sink and here this fan is mounted. So uh, this fan will be rotating and that will help in further cooling down the heat sink. So that is called as the forced air cooling. A forced air cooling obviously is better in performance than your natural cooling. And then there is other type which is called as your liquid cooling. So this is the picture of a liquid cooling. So this one is called as the cold plate. So it is like this entire plate which is there and uh, through which your cooling is going to happen. And you can see here these are these tubes, the copper tubes which are going to carry the liquid. So here the liquid enters here and it comes out from here and in between through these tubes this uh, liquid keeps on circulating. Now different uh, types of liquids can be used. Uh, one is of course your water and second is your oil and what type of oil that uh, uh, may be used may vary from application to application. Now a uh, water has a performance uh, which is better than oil. It is like uh, almost 3 times more efficient cooling for using water than your oil. But uh, water uh, that um, has to be used has to be distilled water means uh, uh, you have to use a purified water no impurities should be there because if there are impurities then that may lead to freezing problem. And also sometimes corrosion may happen because of water. So uh, water care has to be taken while circulating water through the tubes. And uh, another is your of course oil. Oil does not have this problem of uh, the corrosion problem or the freezing problem but oil is uh, flammable. So uh, in applications where oil is used there again precautions has to be taken so that your, uh, the flammable problem of the oil is not creating an issue. Now cooling when it happens there could be different modes in which the cooling can take place. One is your conduction and second is convection and third is your radiation. Now all these three you might be already familiar, you might have studied in your uh, physics books what is conduction, convection and radiation. In this course we will not be going into the details of how cooling takes place 
because uh, there is a lot of theory in it and it is beyond the scope of uh, this course to go into details of that. We will just take very simple models which can be used by a power electronic engineer to select heat sinks for converters. Now, let us look into some of the important terms that are required for choosing the heat sink. So, one important term I already introduced you to that that is your thermal resistance R theta and it is defined as the ratio of temperature change to power dissipation. So, R theta is given as delta T by P D and P D is the power dissipation and delta T is the temperature change and the unit is Kelvin per watt. Now, from this uh, what you can observe is that if R theta is low that means uh, uh, even for large power dissipation the temperature change will be small and if R theta is high that means even if P D is low temperature change is going to be more. So, for heat sinks obviously we want that more power could be dissipated and so low R theta are desirable. Further your you should note that that R theta is given as L by lambda A. Now, L is the thickness of the heat sink heat sink or whatever material for which you want to calculate R theta and A is the area of the heat sink and lambda is thermal conductivity. Now, what is thermal conductivity? It is a measure of a material's ability to conduct heat and its unit is given by watt per meter Kelvin. Now, from this expression what we see is that this R theta is something dependent on the geometry that means your L and A and also dependent on the thermal conductivity which is a property of the material. So, the type of the material and the geometry of the uh, material or the heat sink that is what which primarily decides your R theta. Then further another important term is thermal capacitance Now, this is defined as the capacity of a material to store heat energy. And its unit is given as joules per Kelvin or you can also write the same thing as watt second per Kelvin. Now, this is something similar uh, um, you can relate it with the capacitance electrical capacitance that uh, 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 we know about where you are able to store uh, electrical energy there uh, electrical fields uh, whereas in case of thermal capacitance it is like the capacity to store the heat energy. And this uh, if we denote by C theta, it depends on two things. One is your specific heat capacity C 
and another is the mass density. Now, specific heat capacity C, it is again the capacity of uh, uh, or rather the, the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a substance per unit mass and uh, C the unit is joules per kilogram Kelvin. Now, what we see is that, that if you multiply these two terms that means your R theta and C theta, then the unit that you are going to get, so Kelvin by what multiplied by joules per Kelvin. So, what you will be getting is the unit of seconds. That means, this is your is, is a time constant tau. So, this is called as the thermal time constant. Now, this is again similar analogous to the time constant for RC circuits in electrical circuits where again we use RC as the time constant. So, here uh, we are making an analogy with electrical circuits or electrical equivalent of the thermal performance can be done using this R theta C theta and uh, this time constant tau and further the temperature drop as well. This temperature drop is something analogous to your voltage drop and uh, the power dissipation that uh, is analogous to the to the current that flows in electrical circuit. Uh, we will be looking into it. So, here let us see that. So, um, what here is shown here is that is this is uh, um, is your uh, uh, let us say an IGBT a discrete IGBT or a module may be there where this one chip of the IGBT is shown this is the chip and uh, this one is the casing and uh, then here uh, this uh, shows your uh, thermal pad or the grease that is applied in between this casing and the heat sink. So, it is like uh, sticking it uh, sticking that module or the uh, uh, transistor to the um, heat sink surface. Of course, it has to be screwed uh, uh, I mean the module or the discrete device has to be screwed to the heat sink, but a thermal paste uh, or a pad is also applied in between them. So, this is the thermal pad or the grease and this is the chip. So, this is the case and this is your heat sink. Now, here uh, let us uh, give different names to the different temperatures. So, this one is the junction temperature Tj of the chip and here there is this uh, case temperature which is Utc. This one is the temperature of the heat sink Ts. Now, each one of these have uh, uh, your thermal resistances. So, what uh, uh, we can name it as uh, between your junction and the case, your the thermal resistance is denoted as R theta J C and between case and the sink that is uh, that can be denoted as R theta C S and uh, of the heat sink that is heat sink to the ambient. So, ambient will also have its own temperature we can call it as T A the ambient temperature. So, between uh, your this T S and T A uh, we can say that the resistance is R theta S A that is sink to ambient that is basically the thermal resistance of the heat sink. So, uh, we can model it like this that the heat uh, which is which actually flows from this chip because uh, he, this is where all your conduction losses and uh, um, uh, switching losses takes place and uh, then here heat is generated and then this heat has to be dissipated and this device has to be cooled down. So, from here to here 
the cooling happens so the heat gets dissipated from this so this is like this uh, we can uh, make a diagram like this. Now uh, what we want is that uh, we want to represent it form of an electrical circuit. So, that is what is shown here this is electrical analog of the heat transfer. So, this power dissipation P d is modeled as a current source and this uh, temperature as I told you is analogous to voltage in electrical circuits. So, your uh, this is the voltage um, or rather the temperature of junction temperature T j and uh, uh, you have this point T c then T s and then T a and in between them this thermal resistances are put your R theta J c, R theta C s and R theta S a. So, now then we can write P d as equal to the dissipated power as equal to T j minus T a. So, T a is the this reference. So, this point is your reference which is the ambient temperature. So, any rise is above the ambient temperature. So, T j minus T a by R theta junction to case R theta C s plus R theta S a sink to ambient we can write like this. So, now, when we have to choose this R theta S a that means the heat sinks how much should be the thermal resistance of the heat sink if we have to decide that. So, what uh, we will be doing is that uh, we, we, we will have an idea of the ambient temperature because whatever your application is where you are going to use your converter uh, you will know what will be the ambient temperature approximate ambient temperatures. And uh, based on the devices you have selected when you go to the data sheets then you will see the Tj the maximum junction temperature that the device can withstand. And uh, uh, this case to a uh, junction to case thermal resistance that is also specified in the data sheet of the dis, uh, devices. So, you will obtain this R theta Jc from there and uh, this R theta C s is based on your what thermal pad or grease whatever you are using applying that also usually uh, you will be able to find out. So, then uh, these two are known that means your R theta J c and R theta C s these are known and uh, T j and T a this is also known. So, uh, and what is the maximum power dissipated? that also you can estimate that we have looked into how much power losses are taking place in the devices that you can have an estimate of it. And from there when you have everything in this equation uh, uh, so you can find out what could what is a good value of R theta S a that will be able to limit this T j below the maximum junction temperature that is specified in the data sheet. Now, further when um, your thermal losses takes place power dissipation happen then at that time there may be various variations in it like for example when you are starting the converter and you are shutting down the converter or you were, uh, were operating at one uh, particular state and then you took it to another state. So, this is like uh, once in a while changes that may be happening and those may also lead to changes in the, the, uh, the power losses and the uh, heat and so the temperatures. Now, these are relatively slow variations. So, this is called as the thermal cycling uh, and uh, that uh, has uh, their own problems associated with what kind of failures may happen, how many number of times thermal cycling in uh, the devices can withstand. So, or the different uh, whatever uh, components that are used uh, how many number of times they can withstand the thermal cycling. So, that can be looked upon and then there is the power cycling that means your regular power dissipations that are taking place the ups and downs that are happening in them in a, in a very frequent basis at a much higher frequency. So, uh, in that we can have two types of responses. One is your steady state response and another is your transient response. So, steady state response here is like that you uh, whatever power dissipation is happening that has uh, that is taking 
place in uh, in a fixed manner or fixed rather uh, we should say is is in a pattern and that is continued okay this is similar to the steady state and transient response that we talk about in electrical circuits so, let us say this is the power dissipation graph that is shown. So, with respect to time t, this power dissipation is fixed, it is not changing. So, then from this r theta equation which is equal to delta t by p d, what uh, we can see is that your delta t the change in temperature which will be your t j minus t a is equal to r theta p d. So, if uh, p d is fixed not changing with time, so delta t that this difference between in the temperature uh, t j minus t a this will be also fixed. So, that is like a steady state it is it is being maintained. Now, similar situation you can see uh, in this case also where uh, the dissipation of the power let us say first uh, it was at some level p 0 and then it reached to another level which is your p s. So, uh, initially while let us say this was maintained for quite some time. So, at that time the junction temperature was over here and then when this uh, sudden transient came up it changed this power dissipation. So, it will take a while for it to reach to the next junction temperature uh, if we call it as T j max. And in between there is a transient the temperature will increase and then it will again reach to the steady state. So, for uh, this uh, graph uh, we can write T j max minus T j as equal to R theta P d plus your P s minus P 0 z theta as a function of T s. Now, T s is this time interval and this one is your uh, transient impedance, the thermal impedance this we will be discussing a uh, little later. Uh, so, what we see here is that that this part is the is the temperature rise which is a, uh, of transient in nature. And this part r theta p d this one is the steady state part. So, finally, when here it is in steady state. So, this your r theta p d that uh, uh, is the um, temperature that will be obtained. And uh, this T s it is it is the like your time constant um, your uh, what we saw just uh, a while ago that is multiplication of your r theta and c theta. So, higher the time constant the more time it will take to go from one steady state to another steady state means more will be the time of the transient and smaller is the time constant that will it will quickly reach up to the next steady state. Okay. So, this time constant also then that is important while your power dissipation levels may be changing. Now, steady state response can also be looked upon in a situation where let us say this the power is pulsating this, uh, this P d what we see here this graph it is a pulsating nature. But the frequency of these pulses is so high that uh, 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 um, with respect to the uh, time constant of uh, the corresponding semiconductor device that the junction temperature is not able to change much because the junction temperature has got its own inertia okay the whatever the device the junction uh, that is there the chip it has its own thermal inertia. So, it, it takes some time for it to change because of its own uh, whatever the time constant is there. So, here what uh, we see here is that that this is the junction temperature this is how it, it is varying it is slightly increasing decreasing uh, here you can see that here it increases for this much interval and then for here to here for this time interval it is decreasing. And this this increase and decrease may not be very high. So, it is like uh, uh, the junction the chip is uh, reacting to the average rather than the actual power dissipation that is taking place the 
the huge amount of change that is happening in the uh, power dissipation at a high frequency to that the junction is not responding it is actually responding to the average power. So, this also is like the steady state uh, only I mean it is taken as a steady state response and it is this average of this is what uh, we can take it as the junction temperature. So, here your junction temperature P d we can say that it is the average temperature average power dissipation to which it will be responding and that will be T j minus T c the case temperature divided by your R theta j c. Now, this R theta j c means the thermal resistance of, uh, um, of junction to case is what can be used uh, in this case. And then this uh, if it is steady state that means that will be equal to T c minus T a R theta C s plus R theta S a we can write like this. So, uh, then as I have told you before that you know the different other temperatures and so using this then you can find out what will be the uh, sink thermal resistance that will be required. So, in uh, case or in situations where steady state response is valid in those cases the thermal resistance concept can be used to select the heat sink. We can uh, substitute other values and if the uh, let us say the power dissipation is like this it is pulsating but at a very high frequency uh, um, and the time constant of um, your junction to case is relatively uh, more as compared to the frequency at which this uh, uh, the power dissipation is pulsating. In that case the steady state response the equations like this or uh, this, uh, this electrical circuit this electrical circuit that I have sh uh, shown you can be used for choosing the heat sink. So, the key points of this lecture are that there are different types of cooling your natural forced air and uh, liquid cooling. And uh, depending on the application and especially the range of power uh, your the type of cooling is, is chosen for small power low power levels natural cooling is sufficient as the power level goes up then we have to go for forced air cooling and further when the power level becomes very high then that time even forced air cooling does not work we have to go for liquid cooling. And uh, thermal resistance is a very important parameter in uh, choosing heat sinks and uh, then we can use a simple thermal equivalent circuit uh, if a steady state response is uh, valid for uh, the type of power dissipation that is taking place. And uh, in case of your uh, steady state temperature rise as uh, uh, I just showed you that the temperature is, is like uh, going to a particular value and it is being maintained that, that, that means it is steady it is it is not changing very quickly with respect to time. Thank you.